Hi, my name is Ellen. Um, so this is my house that I bought in 2002. And I moved to Berkeley, California from Washington, DC. And I'm originally from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. So I bought the best house I could for the money that I had. And I've lived in this house for 18 years. And when I saw this house, I looked at a whole bunch of houses. And when I saw this house, this house was, it was old, it's from 1921, but I could tell that it very little had ever been um, restructured or there were no like renovations. I could see that like one family had owned this house for a really long time. And that was the truth after I learned everything a family owned this for 65 years and I liked how it was in this very simple state because I really like to work on things myself. I got interested in greening because as I, so I, I wasn't from California, but then when I moved out here and I met all these people and they were talking about environmentalism in a way that I had never really paid that much attention to because I had led a very urban life before then, I was like, huh, I could do that. Okay, so why don't you guys come in and check out my house? So one of the biggest things that I did in my house was during the pandemic, I took on this big project, which was that we completely redid our energy system for our house. And we went with a heat pump. And it was a big undertaking because in the past, we had a floor gravity furnace that used to sit in between these two walls right here. You can't see it anymore because they took it out and they patched it up. This thing, which was probably from like original to the house, this house is from 1921, um, it worked for about eight years and then it just stopped working. And my wife and I are very, well, she's very eco-minded and she was just like, put a sweater on, get under the blankets, whatever. And that's how we lived for a while. And then something happened where we had other electrical problems in our house. So we started to kind of like address different electrical things. We got a new panel and I took on getting the heat pump. And the heat pump is really cool. It was a whole new system. It sits in the attic above my house. And it's a Japanese system, very high tech. You can barely hear it on. It's like a little cat purring at you. And what's cool about it, it's a heating system. It's an air conditioning system, but it's also a air filtration system, which I have come to really like. If there's some like, smells going on or somebody cooks, I just go over here to my nest, whoosh, turn that fan on and boom, it's gone. Well, one, one thing that I think is different about my mentality about owning a house compared to other people is that I was a museum professional and my friends who bought homes, old homes, we were really into kind of like almost restoring a house and not renovating a house. So when I bought this house and I came in, I saw these, uh, you know, real, you know, real wooden cabinets that were from the 1920s when this house was built, and and you know most people would be like just rip those suckers out, but I thought you know well why rip out a product that is probably more expensive than the one I'm going to put in because this is all real wood. So what I did was. I sanded them all down and I painted them. And I did that 18 years ago. And then in the pandemic, when I didn't have anything to do, I just repainted these all again. Because I like the idea of my old kitchen. I don't want to have a kitchen that looks disjointed from my bungalow. Because this is a bungalow kitchen. Okay, so one of the first things that I did that was really moving towards like a greener house and away from, you know, my, my kind of Eastern ideas about how a house works 
is that I had a washer and dryer in my kitchen. And I noticed that when I walked around and looked at houses, that people had their washer and dryers like in these closets outside of their houses. And just at the time where I thought, oh, I'm going to do that, I was reading about the gray water systems, which I thought were really, really intriguing. And so I made this project where I moved my washer and dryer out into this closet that I made. I built a deck. I had a plumber give me a cold line. And then I moved my washer and dryer out. And then I built this like little house around it. And that was great. And the other thing about it was is that I made it into a gray water system. So when I bought this house, I bought it for a couple different reasons. It was this beautiful magnolia tree right here. It was this big old garage, and it was my clawfoot tub. Those three things I still have in my house. But I also bought this house because it had this incredible backyard that looked absolutely nothing like the backyard that is here now. It had grass, it had chain link fence, and I was probably had that lawn for maybe two or three years and as soon as I started reading about gray water and what is the California landscape I was like with the yard so then I started my yard became like my outdoor laboratory so in 2009 one of my friends Lisa David who's a wonderful woman who's really into permaculture gardening was like Ellen, you should get chickens. Your kids will love them. And I was like, chickens, huh? So I, my wife was like, yeah, chickens, let's get those eggs. And I saw it as this huge like DIY project. So I read all these websites about like how to build a chicken coop. What's the best chicken coop to do? And I was really into reusing completely recycled wood. So for the most part, there's some bought wood, but for the most part, my two chicken coops that I have are completely made with scavenged wood from either urban ore or made out of pallets. Um, I have a tendency to do these kind of elaborate projects because I'm a school teacher and I have the summer off. So I got really into making mosaics, and there's a bunch of them around my garden. And they too are DIY because they're broken. That's the nature of a mosaic. It's, it's broken tile. Is that I went and scavenged in dumpsters at tile places, broken tile, and I read and watched things about how to do mosaics, and I, I made mosaics. So when I bought this house, I knew that one family had lived here for a really long time. And a man showed up at my door, and he knocked on the door, and he introduced himself and he said, oh, my name's Ron Willis and I just want to tell you that this was my grandmother's house. And I lived here when I was a little girl, when I was a little boy. And I just want to say that my grandmother lived in this house for 65 years and she would have loved what you have done with her house, which was like the greatest compliment in the world to me. And I said, oh, that's so interesting. And he said, well, I have pictures of my grandmother, you know, in my life as a little boy living in this house, I'll get them and I'll bring out them and I'll show them to you. And I was like, oh, that'd be great. So he brought me down these pictures of his grandmother. Her name was Mrs. Queen. And when I was looking at these pictures, I noticed that she and her mother, who had moved here from South Carolina, they were basically, they were farming the backyard. They had water spouts, they were growing chestnuts, and they had trees, and they were, they were farming the backyard. And I thought to myself, I was talking to my wife, and, I, and we were like, wait a minute, why aren't we farming the backyard? Now, definitely, they knew a lot more about farming than I did, but we got into this idea, like, if we're living in California, then we should be growing things in our backyard that we eat. Like, we eat these lemons. I'm growing fava beans there. We're gonna eat fresh fava beans. I, you know, rotate my crops. 
I eat fresh eggs all the time. I grow my own rosemary. I grow my own bay leaves. And that's another step towards having a more uh, authentic local diet. So here is a, a major change that happened, which is we uh, had solar panels installed in the t on the top of our house. And that took about five years before they could get solar panels that were lightweight enough to have my bungalow have them up there. So that, I was kind of waiting for that to happen, and now that's up there. So we've had uh, so, uh, solar panels for like two years and that was like all these steps, like you had to do this before you did that. And that was another reason why I went towards electrification. So the main thing that happened with the mini split was that I installed a bigger panel on my house. I had a really tiny little panel when I first bought the house, then I got a medium, and this hopefully is the bad boy that I'm never gonna have to replace. And I needed that because I needed to have my kitchen on dedicated circuits and the mini pump had to have dedicated circuits but then we also took the biggest plunge was we bought an electric car so here's my electric car i love it my son drives it mostly and this is a, called a juice box and the juice box is instead of going to the gas station you just plug in your electric car here and a considerable amount of the electricity that goes into this car is coming from that roof and that's it. Well, thanks for coming over to see me. And I just want to say that all the projects that I've done in getting myself off of petrochemicals and onto electrification and solar energy has been really exciting and really fun. And I'm really glad to be able to do this in my own little way, in my own personal life. Um, I still have a couple other things that I might do in the future, and one would be for me to change my cooking devices induction convection range. And then who knows? Maybe there's something else out there in the future that I can think of. So thanks a lot.